Hey, this is Rick Dobbs, owner of The Last Word in stunning Livermore, California, and this is Just The Sip. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, is, this is Josh Gelfin. He is a grand ambassador. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's brand ambassador for uh, the Glen Levitt, which is uh, an old and storied scotch in, uh, um, in Scotland, because that's where scotch comes from. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that later, but let's talk about right now why it's called Just the Sip. Please. you did... Um, I threw a few suggestions out what, there. The, only, well, the suggestion that was good was Tocktails. But you said Tocktails, and it was actually a bit of a struggle because Tocktails is kind of what this is. We're talking about cocktails and exactly. rhymes and all that, and I was talking to my wife about it. Who, um, you know, she wanted something a little more mild than Just the Sip. But, uh, <laughs> Come on, man. You mean that's never worked with her? Yeah. Come on, honey. Just, yeah. At some point. Early yeah. on, it must have. Um, no, it, it took me a little bit. It was actually um, last week. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Well, cheers to that. Congrats. The Glenlivet has basically been like, the number one single mall in the U.S. basically since Prohibition. Right. Right? Probably during Prohibition, too, but that's we don't have any official to numbers. Use the, the location, right? They're the only ones that are allowed to use that name because of the location. Yeah, well, that's that's true. Um, the for a, for a period of time, the entire Speyside region was referred to as Glenlivet, the Glenlivet Valley, uh, because this was the first legal distillery in the region. Um, after the new Excise Act was passed in 1823, 1824, George Smith got the very first license to distill. And so the transition from a kind of a smuggling economy to the more legitimate scotch program, as the 1800s were on, a lot of other distillers started using the name Glenlivet. Uh, John Gordon Smith uh, was part of a lawsuit uh, that actually almost bankrupted him, but the final result was the Glenlivet was this whiskey. The others had to use a hyphen, their distillery name, hyphen Glenlivet, which most of them did. 28 distilleries, almost everyone in the space side for a long time used their name hyphen Glenlivet until the practice stopped and everyone kind of started standing on their own. But the cool, but another cool thing about Scotch is how blends are blowing up. Yeah, I mean, it's, I guess what we're seeing in the whole whiskey industry is everybody wants to get involved. Right. Everybody wants a piece of this since everything's been blowing up over the last 10, well, it's 15 quite, it's years. Such, it's such a renaissance in all of this, right? Exactly. So blends are the easiest way to get involved right away. Buy right. stock, make your own flavor. It's the from, crossover, yeah. right? It's how you get people more into single malt. Totally. It, 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 yeah, it's, it's a great way to introduce. You're creating kind of lighter, smoother right. flavors from these combinations. But as a producer, too, it seems like it's easier because you can buy already made stock and not have to make your own and wait and wait right, until right. it's ready. You can get out and make a new blend. Which is how they're kind of... Uh, yeah, and that's, I think that's great. That's how uh, they're offsetting the forthcoming aged whiskey crisis, right? Because yeah. so many people are buying it now that... It's the whole reason why white dogs are out. Yeah. I mean, everyone's launching a white dog. Yeah, every craft a, a distiller, yeah. Every craft um, distiller is, needs to get some revenue when they make yeah, their big investment. Well, they're pretty bad, but they're pretty obviously trying yeah. to get out. So. They just need to put it on the shelf. Yeah. Some of them are good, yeah. I, I think uh, it's time to develop. And then you've got the distillers using smaller barrels, and right, kind of getting they, uh, faster aging that way. And stuff like that. I think, I think the craft distilling movement is awesome. It's. Uh, Let's keep trying. We're seeing in distilling what happened in, you know, the 70s, 80s, 90s in beer. Right. That was great. You know, well, you'll get some crappy now. ones, but the uh, the cream will rise to the top. Right. Right. I, what I like, and what I've learned in the spirits industry is most, the vast majority, and I say vast majority of the big brands that we know, are making really high quality craft products right. at scale. Right. I mean, they're they're they are still creating it in the way that these all products started as small craft and they just found a way over time because of money because of popularity and they can invest and take that same core product and bring it to scale right and just because you're making a lot doesn't mean the quality is any right. lower and I think with spirits in particular the good spirits well and that, that works both that. ways too there's there's some people doing you know mass produced stuff that's pretty horrible yeah you know yes <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I think I mean of the higher end quality no, products no, you're that right, we you're right. we know to look towards. Um, I mean, in the whiskey side, in the in the Scotch whiskey side, even from blends. I mean, you can you have your kind of low low end blends right. that are very young and very you know just Climbing put out Gregor. there. Is that what you're talking about? I'm not talking about any brand in particular. 
Um, but that's the worst part of being a brand ambassador. I can't, you can't talk <laughs> shit about anything, right? <laughs> I don't know if we're rolling right now, but I want to advise against mixing Nadura and Fernet. <laughs> well, we've got to do a drop of like a scotch. I know, we do have to do okay. a drop of like a scotch. So, uh, to go with your brilliant, you must be tired, segue, um, this is a drop it like a scotch. Drop it like it's scotch. I think I named it, but, uh, well, actually Trevor Easter named it. So, so I'll give credit where credit's due. I originally called it a drop scotch. Drop scotch. Just yeah. drop scotch. Yeah. Like like a hop scotch. You know, I, we scotch. tried it with IPA. I could have called it a hop scotch. It didn't work flavor wise. Just drop scotch. And then it was either you or Trevor that adapted it yeah. to drop it like it's no, scotch. No, I texted Trevor. Is, I was like, dude, you got to give me a better name. And he said, drop it like it's scotch. He, and he was absolutely right. So thank you, Trevor, once again. Yeah. Um, pun names. Inspiration, a true inspiration when it comes to He great starts names. with names and then builds the cocktail. I, I do, but I, I, I have as well, and, and he's been a, you know, <laughs> an influence on that for sure. Um, but the origin of this drink uh, came from another uh, friend of ours, a man named Russell Davis, who, uh, while out hanging with him one day, said, Here's the next big Just thing. The mention of his name brings a smile to my face. Yeah. The next big thing craft drop shots. Which okay. we do one here. We do the uh, the butterscotch root beer with green chartreuse. There you go. Exactly. Light the green chartreuse on fire, drop it in. It's a good one. Drop it in. Yeah. And, and the fact is he was right. So I was out with him. I'm like, okay, what can I think of with one of my products that could work in that context? Um, a very a white Belgian beer, a couple dashes of Angus store, a little lemon spritz on the beer, and uh, the Glenlivet 12. Drop it like it's scotch. Good to see you as well. Oh. But the, I think the point of this is to have a classy drop shot. The thing about a drop shot is, well, you're right, make it classy, but uh, drop shots are fun, crowds love them, but what if they can taste what, great too? You know, yeah. It doesn't have right? to be a Jaeger bomb, which also. Bama slammers yeah. and <laughs> kamikazes and Right. The shots you grow up with, the lemon drops. Lemon drop, that's the whole point of that. Right, right? so drop it like it's scotch. Yeah. That's well, good, good to have you, brother. Thanks hey, so man. much for uh, hanging out. My pleasure being Appreciate here. coming on the uh, Just Sip, and uh, <laughs> just want to see what it feels like. Just sip, yeah. <laughs> just a sip. It feels Sorry, okay. Sorry, we use cocktails, but. I, I, might be, I might be ready for what's next. <laughs> yeah. Know, we'll see. I'll be gentle. I'll call you in the morning. Okay. Good to have you, brother. Thanks, Rick. Thanks.